Now, according to the spec sheet, the NSX will do zero to 60 in three seconds. Now, luckily for us, we've got a track to ourselves. We've got launch mode, which should help us out. All we've got to do is put our feet on the brake. We floor it on the accelerator. We let go of the brake, and hopefully in three seconds, we'll be doing 60 mile an hour. Let's see how we go. <laughs> okay, all right, I got some stuff to say about that. Welcome to Auto Blogs Translogic. I'm Jonathan Buckley. Today, we get to experience the return of a legend, the all-new Acura NSX. After a 10-year hiatus, this car is back with a vengeance and a trio of electric motors. And while it might share the same moniker as the original, the all-new 2017 NSX has definitely been reborn. So this is a car that we saw unveiled in Detroit 2012, then it went away. Then we saw it pop up in Iron Man. Finally, it's been finished and it's come out after changing the powertrain and everything. We finally have the 2017 Acura NSX. And let me tell you, so far, I'm not disappointed at all. Well, I'm here with the chief engineer and the performance development leader for the NSX, Jason Widmer. Mate, we finally made it. It's been a long time coming, but the NSX is with us here today at a track. The original NSX was a mid-engine supercar, sports car, supercar. The current model NSX is a mid-engine supercar. Mm -hmm. but that's about where the similarities end, isn't it? From a hardware viewpoint, yes, but from a conceptual viewpoint, they're very much the same. The original car, if, if you do recall, uh, although it is a normally aspirated engine, it was all aluminum construction, which was very controversial at the time. Everything was steel at the time or yeah. other composites. So it really pushed the boundaries there. It also pushed the boundaries of what could be done with engine technologies. We had all kinds of uh, titanium rods and special coatings. And if you remember it, it really did change the way people perceived supercars at that time. And I think from that standpoint, this car is very much like that car. It's very controversial, a lot of new technologies. It's really advanced in how it's pushing cars forward, and it's going to change the automotive segment very much like that original car did. They've taken 3.5 litre V6, twin turbos, combined that with three electric motors to come up with a car that really does like to get up and hustle around this racetrack. Of course, all this performance and technology comes at a price, and a fairly hefty price too. Acura have definitely put this right in the sort of low-end supercar range. So, base model, $156,000. The model that I'm driving right now, as it sits, it's about $200,000. It's got a bunch of extras, aside from the carbon ceramic brakes, which I have, which add an extra $10,000 to the price. Those extras are mainly cosmetic, so you can really get away with getting the base model in this. Acura is no stranger to the hybrid powertrain, but a hybrid powertrain in a supercar proposes a whole bunch of different challenges. What were some of the challenges with the NSX? I'm glad you brought up the fact that we've been making hybrids for 20 years now, so we're no strangers to the hybrid systems. We're also no strangers to the performance aspects of a hybrid system, uh, the fact that electric motors can give you this instantaneous torque that, yeah. from a vehicle dynamics viewpoint, is very desirable. What you introduce when you try to put that type of technology into a supercar, how do you manage that torque, and how do you manage the heat that's generated from those mini devices? So we do have a total of 10 heat exchangers on the car to manage the heat from the processors, from the electric motors, this car makes a lot of great noises. The engine pops and cracks just the way you would expect from a supercar. I love the sound when it changes gear. It's very direct and very fast, but it's the twin turbos that got me. You've got this kind of blow-off valve thing going on, so when you let off the accelerator, you're getting this
when it comes to the powertrain, we've got a V6, twin turbocharged, and then you've basically attached three electric motors to the vehicle. That's correct. We've got two at the front axle, independently driving each of the front wheels. Yep. And then we've got a third motor sandwiched between the engine and the transmission. This provides two major functions. One is a bit of torque fill yeah. for the engine as the turbochargers are spooling up. And it also serves as a generator back there as well. Give us just a, just a quick rundown of torque vectoring for those who may not understand. The torque vectoring is through independent control of wheels, you can actually adjust the attitude of the car, allow it to do something without that independent drive from a physics viewpoint would not be possible. What it especially does on this car is allows us to extract additional grip that's left on the table, if you will, from each of those tires. So by driving the inside wheel at a different speed than we can drive the outside wheel, we can actually extract more grip and allow the car to vector around the corner in a way that's not possible without torque vectoring. Something that you guys have implemented that is kind of new now, brake by wire. What's the system and how does it work? By taking the mechanical aspect out of the brake and actually allowing a, if you will, a computer to control the pressure that's at the, each of the wheels, what we are capable of doing is for every time the driver requests a given amount of stroke out of the pedal, yeah. they can get the same consistent G the same stopping power, if you will. It doesn't, independent of temperature, independent of uh, atmospheric conditions, whatever, you're always going to get that same exact feeling out of the pedal. Now, I was concerned initially that what if I was having a really hot session? And we all know if you've done a few track days before, there's a point where your brakes just start to fade. And so Acura have got you covered there as well. First, you'll get a warning on the dash that will tell you that there's too much heat and to slow down. Then second, it'll start to add a squishy feeling to the brakes, which will then let you know, of course, to either come in or take it easy for a couple of laps just to let the brakes cool down so that you can start going back out again and having a bit more fun like we are today. As with uh, most cars nowadays, we have driving modes. We've got four in the NSX, Quiet, Sport, Sport Plus, and Track. Take us through the different modes. Quiet mode, that mode is focused on keeping the car quiet, as the name might suggest. To, is that just to stop annoying the neighbors? It, it's kind of one of those uh, escape modes, you know, flying under the radar. Okay. Um, there's a lot of proud moments with the sounds that they yeah, make and exciting. Yeah, sometimes you want to make a bit of noise and let everyone know you're there. Other but times there's other there. times when you're getting that stink eye look from somebody that you're like, yeah, I kind of got to keep it cool. And now, is this a, an area, launch mode, where we actually get to really see those electric motors shine? It's a little bit of a different experience than what you'd experience in any other supercar, even cars that make two times the horsepower of this car. It's very much got that electric, instantaneous torque, shoves you in the seat, and really doesn't let you come up for air for quite some time. All right, drop it, and back in first gear, foot on the brake, floor the accelerator, let go of the brake. <laughs> You're getting such a push off the line that it kind of reminds me of a Tesla because those three electric motors are disguising any kind of turbo lag that you might be getting from the six cylinder twin turbo and giving you that torque off the line. And what that does is if you've ever driven a high performance electric car, it gives you that feeling in the chest, that sinking in the chest that throws you straight back into the seat and just launches you off. And let me tell you, if for nothing else other than launch mode, it works and it's fun. <laughs> Are you already now looking at the follow-up to this car? Well, the platform that we utilize for this car, both the frame platform, if you will, space frame that we utilize, the chassis, as well as the powertrain, were designed with a long lifetime in mind, a lot of flexibility to those. The sky's the limit as far as what we can do here. We can make these technologies and, and these platform elements into a lot of different variants. So, of course, we're dreaming of many, many variants of this car to go well into the future. Well, the new Acura NSX really is a unique technological marvel following in the encouraging trend of supercars with hybrid powertrains. And it's been a while for the new NSX, but with its unique styling and advanced engineering, in my opinion, it's been well worth the wait. For Autoblogs Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.